Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, it's your host, Koji. Welcome to Conversations with Koji. Hey, this is a deep show today, everybody. This is part two of my wrongly accused. You know what I'm saying? Now, let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you how deep this situation is, everybody. I'm riding into the show today. My producer's phone is lighting. I mean, lighting up with calls. It's so deep right now, people, that it's a lot of other people that want to be heard who feel like they was left out of this show, who got family members who's doing life, who's got family members that's wrongly accused, and they got all the evidence showing that they didn't have nothing to do with it. I'm already claiming it right now. We're doing part three next week, and I got some people that are on fire to get on here, tell their story, and let us know how unjust we being treated with the justice system. You know what I'm saying? This is supposed to be a system that protects us as the people. You know what I'm saying? If we are in this certain city, this city is supposed to guard the people that run the city, that take care of the city, the people that make the city a city. You know what I'm saying? And we ain't finding justice in that, man. It's like this is a different kind of form of slavery that's going on right now. And it's happening to all colors. But the way that they just putting people away and they're not worried about investigating the cases, they're not worried about evidence, they're not worried about nothing. All they want is the conviction, a name, a person, and be able to close that case and move move on but you know what that's good police work when you really do the work to find out that that person did do it that's great police work but when you're doing lazy police work and you're not finding out what you need to find out to help these people man you are ruining a lot of lives you're ruining taking daddies away from their children away from their wives the household is just going to hell without the man or the wife or the sons or whoever people love their children people love their husbands people love their wives you know what i'm saying and we got to fight for them right now and I, I feel like they they say many are called few are chosen i feel like this chose me you know what I'm saying? Because I ain't never went into a part three on no show. Never. This one calls for a part three. So we're going to do it. We're going to do it big. And I mean, we're going to do it Koji style. Y'all know how we're going to do it with the truth. No buffoonery. It's already been a Jerry Springer. We ain't going to do that. We're going to show that any color of people that come on my show we are intelligent we can speak intelligent we can come across with intelligent answers and we can be heard in a way without cussing without saying a bunch of stuff that just make us look bad we're gonna talk intelligent you know what i'm saying we're gonna talk like we got sense we're gonna let people know that we do know what we're talking about and we do have the evidence and we have done our homework and we know why we're right on what we're saying or we can prove it so I want to say welcome to Conversations with Koji today, and I want to welcome in my co-host, Miss Peaches. How you doing today? All right, there it is. So let's go to Pastor T. How you hey, doing, Pastor? How you doing, Pastor T? Hey, Koji. It's been it's been a minute, ain't it, brother? Yeah, but yeah. I'm so honored to be here on the show with you today, man. Let me tell you something. Every time I go in the grocery store, I look on back at the milk cartons to see if I see your picture. If you <laughs> if you missing, they said you came up missing. You know, I'll be looking for you on back of the milk cartons, man. I wondering what's up it, with man. you. You know what I'm saying? For me. I appreciate I appreciate <laughs> the love that, that you and the guys show me. And um, uh, man, we we just doing some. Some some great things here in Jacksonville, and it's got me busy. And we just come from Colorado Springs, Colorado, and and you know, but I'm 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 honored to be here with you today, man. God bless you, sir. Oh, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. And tell your lovely wife I said Happy Mother's Day for me and the whole crew. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I, I would tell her she's taking her Mother's Day break. She wasn't able to do it yesterday because she was on the flight. So okay. she's she's resting now. Okay, there it is. So let's try Miss Peaches again. Miss Peaches, are you with me? <laughs> I'm with you, Coach. I said, oh, he cut me off. Well, how about that? But no. My, I my thought you fainted because of the topic we talked about today. It was too much for you, this second, this second, you know, second opportunity. Now, now, you know what? Let me say this to you, Peaches. We're going into a third segment now. What does that tell you about this situation? It tells me that it is needed. It tells me that you popped the top on a Pringles can, basically, and there is so much going on that people need to know, and they feel like they don't have a place to talk about it. They don't have a place to get it out there. So I'm glad you're doing this, Koji, and making a way. We have very special guests today, and I know that, um, you know, this is a situation and a topic I think it affects everyone, yeah. and the problem is when there's the injustice of putting the wrong person behind bars, everybody is in danger because that the, the wicked, you know, they're still running wild, right. and the police force has that much more work to do. So it really doesn't help anybody get anywhere. Right, right, right. But I do want to say coming out the gate, we do have good law enforcement. 
they they all ain't bad. You know what I'm saying? They they all ain't bad. But, but I mean, it, on every tree, it's a bad apple. That's you get what I'm tr- you get what I'm saying? So yep. I just want people to know: don't think we putting down law enforcement. We not. All we mm-hmm. saying is, can y'all look a little deeper into somebody's case before y'all give throw their whole life away and put them on death row and get ready to end their life? But how can you sleep at night? Knowing that you just put somebody on death row and you're going to murder somebody without even finding out, you know, if they done it or not. Because if I was a cop, there's no way I could sleep at night not knowing if I'm really positive this person done it. You get what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. And I just I'm just praying right now that 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 they find a conscience in this whole situation. And, and prosecutors. Right. And right. The and the, pro- oh, the prosecutors. Oh, my goodness. Come on now. Well, look, this is what we're going to do. We get ready to get ready to, to get this thing going. I guess it'll be coming in soon. And, you know, I want to say this real quick. Pastor T, how needed is this show? Hey, man, this show is, oh, man, it's, it's needed, man. It's, it's everywhere. Every time you turn the news on, man, you hear about uh, injustice. Uh, uh, you see it because money, money is the driving force of this world right, right. now. And, and, and people would do anything for that dollar bill and... and 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 we, we see it every day. Injustice right. everywhere. Right. All right. There it is. You know, thank you, Pastor T. Well, y'all get ready for a great show. And like I said, this song right here is the motivational song for my man, John Thompson. I said, hey, what can I give you, brother, that'll make your spirit feel good and, and, and make you feel good about being out and fighting for these other people? He said, man, give me some at Marvin Gaye. So you listening to, hey, Conversations with Koji, baby. We'll be right back. Let's get ready to fight, y'all. Ding. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Conversations with Koji. I'm your host, Koji. Thank you for tuning in. Now, check us out. I got my man, John, in. He'll be coming in in a minute. But I got another special guest that's on here right now, Miss Patricia. How you doing today? I'm doing great, Koji. How are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. I'm glad you called in today. And the reason why you called in, I want to let our listeners know, you have a son right now who's on death row. I mean, he's doing life right now, right? Yeah, he's doing life or something that um, his father did. Right. And you told me that all evidence, you know, points right at his father. His father even admitted it, but the court system won't let him go, even though they know he didn't do it, right? Um, some of it is right, Koji. Um, what's going on is that my son had a prior record, and um, the, the guys, the, the incident that happened... Um, my son, he was at there because the two guys jumped on him, but someone called his father, and his father came up after my son had left, and the guys was coming out of the club, and the, the dad shot one of them in the face. He didn't die, but the thing is that um, my son didn't do it. And, um, you know, I guess because he fought with the guys, the guys automatically... Um, said that he did it, and there's um, the father told me that my son didn't do it. That after the guys had left, he stayed up there and he shot one of the guys. And I mean, it's a it's a long story behind all that stuff. Right, right, and we'll. Yeah. And we'll we'll definitely be talking about that. You know what I'm saying? Because I got to get my guests in real quick, but I want you to hold on because I'm still gonna be drawn to you. Okay. Okay. All right, Pastor T. Yes, sir. Is this an injustice, man, that's happening right now? Yes, sir, it is. It, this is this is a case that uh, Miss Patricia is talking about. It's one that I'm personally involved with myself. And um, I've also spoken with the father, you know, and the story that he has told me that did not line up with, with what took place that night. So, yeah, it's happening. So when you called me about when we talked, when, uh, when you put me on this show, I say, yeah, we definitely got to talk about this show because this is definitely one that's hitting me personally. Right. Okay, there it is. So, Miss Peaches, let's introduce Mr. John Thompson, and then, boom, we're going to get this show moving. Okay, we have Mr. John Thompson coming in. He's the founder director of Resurrection After Exoneration. Um, he was sentenced to death for a murder he didn't commit. Um, prosecutors concealed evidence from a previous carjacking charge that would have proved John was innocent. He was approaching his seventh execution date before his lawyers were able to uncover the prosecutor's actions, and the courts gave John a new trial. Once the jury heard all of the evidence pointing towards John's innocence and the guilt of one of the state's witnesses, they only took 30 minutes to acquit him. 
so he was he was exonerated after 18 years in prison. He got out in May of 2003. He spent 14 of those years on death row, Koji. So we're really lucky to have John here talking to talking with us and and being exonerated after all he's been through. You got that right, definitely. So hey, we ain't gonna waste no time. John, how you doing today, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you mean by how I'm doing. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm surviving. Um, you, know, you know, I'm I'm still trying to shake. You know what what happened. You know, it's, it's, right. it's, you never get over. I don't care what you able to accomplish. You never could get over what happened and what they did to you, what you witnessed, what you seen, what you was a part of. Right. Well, I just want to say, after 18 years, you came out, you stood your ground, you, 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 you proved your innocence, and you kept your innocence, and you weren't about to work no deal and trade up, man, to give up what you felt was right. How important was that during that whole situation? You got to realize that they, 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 took, they took the most important thing away from me, my freedom. They took me away from my family, my loved ones. 18 years then he tried to kill me seven times mm. it's, but you know seven times he actually was really tired of taking my life so you you know when 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 you get the opportunity on the other side of the fence when you cross over that fence when god when god and to me is god when god allow you to 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 to, to come across that fence forget what man said what man did i am the god truth and so I, pre- I present you before your enemies that's right and, and and when i when i stood before my enemies i must speak about what they did to me i must not allow it to be unheard of or, uh, or go unspoke about or untold so you know that's the most that would be a uh, truly a devastating um blow to 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 myself and to any Anybody that what happened to me affected it just didn't happen to me. You know, you ain't talking about something that just occurred to John Thompson. I had two sons. Um, it occurred. You know, I took. You know, they took uh, the father away from them for eighteen years. Mm-hmm. I was a, a, a father that was a, a hands-on father. My sons left it with me in the house. I worked it. Um, so you took away um, something that's precious from them. You took. I'm the only child to my mother. Oh wow. Um, my grandmother died. My, my father died while I was in prison. So you know, it, you know, you gave me no choice but to do something in, in for for what all these stuff, for what all they put into me, with all the principles that they it bestowed it upon in me as a kid. I, I wasn't robbing no one out there. I wasn't killing nobody out there. That wasn't my makeup. Then there wasn't nowhere a history in my family. I was 22 years old. I ain't had a serious conviction. I had been arrested for. Jaywalking and crazy stuff, uh, shoplifting and stuff like that. Nothing serious. He had no violent history. At 22 years old, so how you gonna make me out a monster? Right. Um, so I must fight. I must show because it, I'm not the only John Thompson. You know, right. I'm the only John Thompson that you got a chance to hear about. Right. But what about all the John Thompson that you don't hear about? All the other falsely accused. You I heard the, the lady before me. You definitely right. Um, on that. You know. It's, 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 it's remarkable, man, even down to the principles of it all. Even if we're going to say that we're going to give us someone that kind of power, that, that kind of authority to take away our liberty and our freedom, to have the, the element, the power to kill, you know, to seek the death penalty. To me, if you think about it, you know, it would make them any different from anybody else committed a murder. Right. And especially if they're doing it to an innocent man. That's right. And they have information or any kind of information that would lead them to um, understand that the man that they're pursuing is innocent and knowingly keep doing it. We have nothing in place to protect us from that. Right. You know what? Let me let me let me ask you this real quick, John. What would you say to all the listeners right now who clearly don't understand and don't get it that? We are being railroaded every day at the courthouse. And let them know that it can happen to you. See, one of the things I say, you know, experience is the best principle, you know. Right. Uh, the best teacher. 
So you know, you know, the best thing you know, I would advise anybody and everybody to go take time out of one of your off days to go and sit in a coat room. Pick a coat room, any coat room in, the, in your district, and go look inside of it and watch what you see. Um, and especially if you can find a serious trial going on, watch mm-hmm. what you see. Go in there and, and tell me what you see. Um, go to go to traffic code. Go to miscible code. Mm-hmm. Go to go to go to some of the lower codes too. Even to see how racket it, it is. It's a setup. It's a system. It's designed to make money. They got to pay people, and so somebody got to be uh, um, the commodity. Something mm-hmm. got to be the commodity to make this system work. You got to imagine when where prison idea come from, and when we first created prison, and and how this country first designed a prison, and what it was all about, and how back in slavery time they were scared to death to lock somebody up. Talking about two years or three years in prison, you crazy? That's work. Ain't no other word. They're gonna lock you up in prison when they could have you working on their phone. Slavery, so they wouldn't lock you up back then. You, you, they, they got crazy when they had abolished slavery. When they abolished slavery, they created another form of slavery, and that became our prison industry. Right. Uh, um, 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 any black community, go and see. That's all you got to just go look at all your penitentiaries around your country. It's easy to, to like really see the answer to them questions. You know, we don't. You got to realize, realize all your parish jails. Go to any one of your parish prisons or your your uh, county prisons um, or whatever you know, whatever kind of prison system y'all have in y'all um, city or country. I can guarantee you, it's overran by African Americans, Latinos, uh, um, people that really can't afford to fight them back. Right. Well, let me ask you this, John. If 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 somebody out there ain't got the money to fight a case and they innocent, I mean, they truly innocent. What should they do? Because ain't nobody got no money right now to fight no court case, which can start out at one hundred thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? Fifty thousand to to this person, fifty thousand to that person or whatever. What can a person do that don't have no money and they are fighting a case and they innocent? I get letters, you know, but I do national work right now. I'm on a national accountability project. You know, I go around um, the country um, and do um, national accountability panels where we put in um, attorney generals, um, former judges, and former prosecutors and all on a panel, and we get them to explain why, why he is not enforcing, you know, simple laws that really protect us from um, um, would be people that's playing up on, um, you know, they were power, their authority that's right. would, would be a prosecutor that's overstepping his boundaries. Um, um, they have place, they have things in places that's just not being enforced. You catch them in different areas. I don't know if you know about um, a few different, but they got district attorney in Dallas doing some remarkable things. He finding out all these innocent guys that was on death row in Dallas, and he, he finding out they was innocent, and he reversing the cases. He not playing. You know, um, they got the governor in um, 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 Illinois, you know, abolished the death penalty pretty much by itself, shut it down in a sense. Um, first to get a moratorium on it, not about now nah, it's gone because uh, he found all these innocent men. So they got people here doing some bold stuff. But just the whole cold part about it is once you're arrested, once you're in prison, just like you just not destroy. If I'm the only child, imagine me trying to convince the world that I was innocent of two different crimes. They convicted me of two separate crimes. A armed robbery, they gave me 49 and a half years for, and a murder, they gave me the death penalty for. Um, both of these crimes happened um, two weeks apart. One crime, they described me in the murder. It happened December the 6th. They described me as being a six feet tall, medium bill, bald head, African American, dark skinned man. In a robbery, that took place two weeks after that. They described me as being a five foot seven African American male with a big bush. Oh wow! They prosecuted me for both of them charges and found me guilty on both of them charges. Used the armed robbery charges because I ain't never had a conviction before. Used that armed robbery charges to convict me to keep me from taking a stand in the murder case. In the murder case, they used that armed robbery to say that how violent that armed robbery was, and then the, the, the people sentenced me to die. Mm. Always uh, information that he had. Clearly, before he even took me to trial for the robbery, he received the information that the blood samples that he, he received and tested was not matching of mine. He clearly didn't know my blood type and the blood type of the individual that committed this crime was totally different. He threw the, all the physical evidence away and then, and then took me to trial. Right. So the day of my trial, he went to the crime lab to get the evidence. The crime, 
and to bring the, um, to bring all the evidence to the courtroom for my trial. He took the blood, tennis shoes, and the blood pants leg and threw it away. Oh, um, wow. And nobody never seen it again. <laughs> um, and he it. only used them three kids to testify and identify me as saying that's I'm a, the one that robbed that's, him. That's a cold. That's me. a that's a cold game, man. But that's, and exactly, and so now think about it. Now I'm the only child. My mama ain't never had no children. So my mama, ain't, my mama is two. Uh, 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 a mother, and she just had one brother, right? Yeah. So she, uh, her, she ain't never been in no trouble. And her brother ain't never been in trouble. Her brother been in the military all his life. So, so my mama didn't know what she was supposed to do, how she was supposed to protect me. All right. Uh, uh, and so, so what, what? Bottom line is, I had to be in debt row by myself, fighting, uh-huh. um, fighting for my life. I had what I had to do is like I had to write. I, I write. I wrote 66, 66, what, 60 minutes on 2020. Um, I wrote uh, Geraldo, um, Oprah. I wrote every damn talk show, everybody you could think of to try to pre- pre- confess my innocence. Pre- pre- and to try to bathe them and let them know that I was innocent. Don't please don't kill me. You know, uh, hey, please help me. But I'm trying to get people to believe that I'm in a, two different charges. Right. And, you know, people are like, hold on, you you know, even if we might think you might have was innocent or one or two, you know, and both of them was robbers. And so I'm trying to get them, look at the description. They, they, they convicted me of two different descriptions. They're trying to say I was six feet tall December the 6th, but December um, the 28th, they try to say I was five feet seven. But with even, a big push. but even 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 with that, John, that couldn't get thrown out. I mean, even even that little bit of information that's wrong, that couldn't overturn nothing. Hell no! Who you gonna ask what overturn the people that did it to you? No, no, no. I'm talking about with your attorneys. Uh, you know the people that was who working you your case. Asking to do something for you, the people that did it to you. Right. I right. don't care who your attorney is. You got to go back before them. Yeah. They the one who did it. Right. So what you think they're going to do, unless they got some accountability attached to them, right. and that's where I'm at, that's what my work is about right now. I, right now I do accountability work. Right now we try to expose, right now I'm trying to expose district attorneys and stuff that did the things they did to me. I, 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 right now I'm on the OSI fellowship. I'm a, you know, and, um, and so the OSI Hello? John? Hello? John? Uh, I think his phone died out for a minute. But John? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm sorry. Okay, okay, finish telling us. You said what you're trying to do right now, you know, exposing prosecutors. I'm sorry, everybody. His phone dropped just a little bit, but we're yeah. going to get right back into it. Go ahead, John. All right. Yeah, uh, so what I'm trying to do is now is do accountability. John, his phone is kind of breaking up. It's what we're going to do. We're going to go to a break, everybody. We'll be right back. You're listening to Conversations with Koji. I've been falsely accused, part two. You don't want to miss it. It's my man, John Thompson. Been locked up 18 years, beat the case, and he's out right now, everybody, to tell us how he done it, what hell he went through, and what we can do as a village to protect ourselves and get ready for the unknown or help somebody else through this whole situation. And we got great guests in right now. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back to Conversations with Koji. I'm your host, Koji. Thank you for tuning in to my show. We coming with the truth, baby. You know what I'm saying? We we keeping it hot, and we going to make sure that y'all know what's going down in the city, in your city, in our city, and everywhere around the world. But we're going to bring the truth, and like I said, we're bringing justice. So we're back with my man, Mr. John Thompson, who's in right now. He just done 18 years, got out, got acquitted, and now he's telling his story right now. And, John, uh, I'm glad you're back, man. Your phone dropped a little bit, but we got you back in. And I want to thank all my guests that's on the line with me, too, Pastor T, Patricia, and Miss Peaches. But let me do this real quick. Uh, Pastor T, what you think about his story so far? Wow, man, awesome, uh, awesome story, uh, awesome story. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing when you hear it, when you can hear it from someone who's been through the pain and been through the hurt. But what I'm listening to also is I'm listening to what he's doing now to help somebody else. Oh, yeah. I'm going through what he's been through and how he's being used now as a vessel to go forth and point out those people that are doing injustice in the system. And the only way uh, anyone could do that is someone who have experienced what he has experienced. That's you know? right. You're definitely so, right on that. Awesome story. All right. Uh, Patricia, what do you think about his story, quick as possible? Um, I think um, that was horrible. Um, I, when I was listening to him, some of the same thing that he's going through, that's what me and my son are going through. And he was right about when you put a man in prison, you imprison his whole entire family. 
That's right. You definitely right on that. And I said that coming out the gate. You definitely right. Miss Peaches, what do you think? Well, uh, Mr. Thompson, I mean, he's been through hell, and you can still hear the pain in his voice as he speaks. And we know he's working really hard with his organization, Resurrection After Exoneration. So, you know, I'll be waiting for all the info. So I know I have a lot of people that want to hear it and what they can do to help. So I'm waiting for that. There it is. So uh, we're going to go back to John. John, tell us about your organization right now. How can we reach you, and where can you be reached, you know what I'm saying, if we need to talk to you? you know, right now, you know, we just really doing a lot of um, crazy um, traveling and to force educating the public in, into different communities and schools. So we, you, our line, we have two different organizations that do two different things. One is Resurrection After Exoneration. That is pretty much our reentry center where we use for exonerated guys that's coming home from prison that really don't have anything coming home to nothing like pretty much all of us came home to. What we did is in our state, because of most of us had spent a long time in prison, we created a, a home. Um, so we raised money and, and, and bought a home that have um, a residential living quarters in it. But we also bought a, a, a larger building to make it out of center, too, where we do community service such as computer literacy, um, we bring in, um, we got silk screen printing company because we needed to have something that was going to make us sustainable. I think in some places, they got places like the Lancet Streets and stuff, and some of them other organizations that we built that on similar um, type of prototype that they did, but we was for sure looking for a way to make ourselves self-sustainable. Um, and then we had the outreach aspect of it, the advocacy aspect of it, where I got with a creative writer and helped them guys be able to tell their stories in their own way. And we go out and educate the legislators, we go out and educate the public, we go out and educate the would be law students that are um, graduating um, 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 from law school, from Howard University, different universities come in and help us work on different projects in our center. Um, some are interns, we get um, interns from all over um, the United States. Really, they come on and help us work on different laws and different um, ways that we can better ourselves and better the system. And that's why we started reaching out and started helping different organizations that reaching out to us, different guys that we get letters from because they hear us in the news, because we might go to the state. Right now I'm on accountability tour with um, the Innocent Project out of New York. Well, we've been, we didn't did three states already, but we're getting ready to hit California and do three cities in California, and we're getting ready, then we're going. We just left out of um, Arizona and, and Austin. Each month we go to a different state, um, which we're going to end up in um, Washington, D.C., um, with a protest, hopefully, um, trying to um, ask for some, um, you know, right now the prosecutors have immunity. Mm -hmm. um, people got to wake up and realize that um, this person that got control over life and death that can kill you. You know, it's crazy because we look at Charles Manson, you know, people don't want to really hear this like this. And the real story is, you know, the real story is just, you know, Charles Manson, we had Charles Manson in prison. We didn't have Charles Manson in prison all these years, right? Right. And we say that we have him in prison because we say he manipulated the minds of these other people to make them people go out and commit a crime. Right. That crime was murder, Right. So here we got a district attorney that do the same thing, that take that, that take that the information that he have, even though he knows it's false, and present it to a jury to get them jurors to commit a murder, mm. such as Troy Davis, for instance. Right. We don't know. We still don't know. It's a puzzle right now. But if tomorrow comes, you know, they had eight witnesses, um, six of them recanted, huh? Uh, however, when it, I know 80 percent of them recanted. Now they only have two or three left. So if these two or three ever come up and say they lied to, like they probably did, um, and we realize that the district attorney made all these witnesses lie, just hypothetical now. This just a hypothetical thing we, we, I'm talking about. Right. And, and, and we realize that this man, these, so therefore that these understanding and knowingly put an innocent man on that road and actually committed that murder, what is we ready to do as a country? That's if right. this happened and when this happened. And it did happen already, believe it. Right now we got 147 innocent men that have been exonerated on death row around the United States. Mm. And not a district attorney been held accountable. So if we didn't got 147 men off for of death row that was innocent, you can't believe out of all out of the, the, the six, seven hundred and something that didn't execute it, that didn't kill a couple of um, innocent ones. Right. 
Right. You know, and so so you know, and so then then you you know what the DA gonna say? Exactly. Oh, the jury sent us them to death, not me. That's right. You definitely right on that. I presented the information. That's what they're gonna tell them. He's gonna put that murder on the twelve people. Mm-hmm. And so, do we put them twelve people on trial for murder? No, we make the prosecutor stand accountable. You definitely exactly. right on that. That's now, right. We got to, but we as a people, and we got to understand as a people that D is a voted, D is elected, D worked for us. That's right. So why is this the only job in our history that do not have accountability attached to it when they got the control over the most important thing to us, our freedom and our life? So it's almost like we voting an executioner in on us that's supposed to be fighting for the people, of the people, and they knocking us straight off, but we voted them in. And check, and y'all got one of the biggest death penalties in the world. Biggest death penalty in the world. But and think about this. Think about this. The crazy aspect of it you know, is, 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 is that is we, we think we're supporting something that I really don't see we are. You know? So think about this. So the first question is, do you support the death penalty? If that's what they going about making the country decide whether they kill them or whether do they have the death penalty or not, if that's the question they're using to ask, to, 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 to support whether we have to definite it or not, I, I suggest that we change that question. Right. I suggest that's an improper question. Right. I suggest the question should be, do you give your state permission to kill you? Because the district attorney is the only one who have authority to say who he's going to seek the definite for or not. Not you, or not your attorney. Him. So he's the only one who have that power to say who he's going to execute or who he won't. So, it's so if he's the only one with that, if we're the only one with that power, I'm asking you: Do you get a state permission to kill you? That's the question. Not do you support the death penalty? Because if you ask me to support the death penalty, the first thing I'm gonna think about is somebody else committing a crime. I'm not gonna never think about I'm being falsely accused of committing a crime. That's right. Yeah, you right. But let me ask you this: You, you know what? Like you said, with their district attorney, what if he get into it with his wife and he just come to work with a grudge and he just don't want to deal with nothing and he's angry? And you definitely right. And he got the power to just say, "F everybody." And you know what? Now this person's gonna die. That person's gonna die because I don't want to deal with it. Nobody should have that much control. You definitely right. Am I right or wrong with what I'm saying? I think you're totally right. I think, you know, I told me, I told me that for us to like really as human beings, as, as Christians, as whatever we want to call ourselves, wherever we want to say we're going with our country, as us as human beings, especially African Americans, after coming out of slavery and all, if we as, if, if we say that we have overcame, if we say we have moved on to that next level of, uh, 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 being accepted as human beings, you can't keep you can't keep a slave mentality no way in this in this line of, of uh, in using it as an excuse of saying it's justice. Right. When if you go through that code system, I can't get justice. Justice for who? Right. She told me she blind. She she her symbol is blind. Right. You know. Come on, giving justice for who? So if I don't have the right money, then I come through there and I can show you some exonerees that had money that spent major money on the defense and still was found guilty. Right. So it's not all the time about money. It's because they got the power to do anything they want to do. Exactly. You have to realize it. They can make you spend their money. They ain't using their money. They spending taxpayers' money. That's true. Wait a minute, John. Hold on one second. I'm going to go to Patricia. Uh, Patricia, what did you tell me today? That you can pull up in a three-piece suit and a Rolls Royce, and you still going to go. Talk about that real quick. I told you that's it. I'm going to just put it to you um, just like this. If this is the new modern day slavery because number one and it's all over the country it's all over the country so i mean yeah you could pull up in a three-piece suit but when when just like you said when push comes to shove if they come in there pissed off mad about the and mad at their wife that's including the judge if they come in mad guess what you going back that's right we got to face that that's right. You definitely right on that. Now, I'm going to go back to uh, John real quick. John, I'm going to ask you, what can we do as a people to help fight against this situation? Like you said, no one man should have all that power. Just like Kanye said, and it's true. No one man should have all that power to just be able to terminate your life because he feels like it. So what can we do as a people to change this law or do what we need to do to help other people who's on death row right now, other people who's in jail right now that, I mean, all you, you can see the evidence, even if you blindfolded that they didn't do it. What can we do to help these people through this whole situation? I think for sure we got to organize, you know, we got to organize and we got to identify. How do we know? do that? 
How do we uh, organize? Uh, so when we say organize, how do you organize it? So where where most of your strength comes from is from the victims themselves, okay. the guys that's on that rope, you know, um, um, the guys that been that's gone through the whole. And, and I think that's what the world is about. The world is about like we is one for sure. We is most one of the most forgiving people when until it comes down to forgiving each other. You know, we can forgive the world for anything they do to us. We forgive any parts that have been put upon us, but self each other. When we get down to forgiving each other for anything, we get after we get, we get mindless. You know, I'm thinking for, for sure we shouldn't have a death row around this country anywhere. Uh, nowhere in the United States we should have a death row unless we're going to put every person there willing to kill. He got to be responsible, as he said. He said the individual that they're putting on death row is ready to kill, and he did because he killed. Well, we're saying if you kill, you deserve to be there too then. What right. makes you any different from him? You are just the same human being he is. The only thing you have the, the authority is to prosecute him. So if you could do that and you could kill him as a man, you, you need to be on that road too. Because right. that's what you put him on that road for. So we got to enforce that. So we got to pick out our legislators. What we got to do is, is get together with our churches and our the people that vote because them the people that count and we got to look at these individuals and go to our representatives with proposals and say what do you have in place to protect us right what kind of what what laws we have to change to make you protect us when you come in here asking for our vote we want to know what is you doing to protect us and protect our people because for the for, for too long it's been happening and you've been voting um and, 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 and not creating um the things that we need to have to correct Created, and I think you go to the, you know, the universities and all could be creative in creating these type of uh, uh, venues for y'all. Uh, that, that 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 really could get the backbone to to the movement. But it needs to be it needs to be a heartfelt movement, and y'all need to talk to people, target the people that make the difference, the people that make the difference in the, in y'all state, in the laws, in your senate, who sit on in y'all house of representatives, who representing y'all, uh, and before before Congress, you know. Right. Um, Y'all need to talk. We, them people need to be understood. Really, a, a proposed letter need to should be put together because if y'all think about anything, I'm serious. If y'all want to think about the death penalty, I don't really believe that none of us support the death penalty. I really believe that's the, a means that they use to keep yourself in office. There it when they're using the death penalty. Uh, you ain't got to kill somebody for my sake. Right. I don't know what you say he did. But if he did something, y'all convict him. If y'all, as long as y'all leave him living, at least we might could find out. One day he was innocent. But if you kill him, we sure can't find out. Right. You know what? Let me say this real quick. I want to ask you this real quick, John. What do you say to the families who have people in there right now? They going through it. What's your words of encouragement to have them to hold on? And how should they hold on? And what can they do in the meantime of holding on to help that person? Right. Right now, right now, we just now got some letters from 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 a, a death row around. I'm not gonna name the country, the city, because we don't want to like really expose it right now. That's cool. We got some letters from this guy on death row, and these guys telling us about the procedures that's going on and the illegal procedures that's going on. There. And we just to target it, we just to look at it, we just to expose it because we really believe that it's similar to the same kind of um, corrupt corrupt system that we have here. And I'm saying this, if y'all have corrupt systems and y'all understand what a corrupt system look like, y'all contact us, y'all contact ACLU, y'all contact your national uh, uh, NAACP, y'all contact y'all attorney general and, and expose them. you got to expose them. You can't ask for so you got to do everything as your parent, as a parent, you know, you know, I was the only child. You know, I, my, my, my father died. My mother was by herself, you know, and she was paralyzed. But she tried to do everything she could to to, to help me, you know, um, um, prove my innocence. So don't never feel like you're alone, and don't never give up. Because if God got you here and God gave you that strength to do it, God ain't put you in that position for nothing. So, you know, uh, um, and, and all the time it might not end the way we think it should end. You know? Right. So that ain't nothing to frown. That ain't nothing, but we need to support the mothers, too, though. Because the mothers is going through a lot of pain. You know, I, everybody ain't innocent there. You know what I'm saying? But still, nobody don't deserve to die. That's right. You know, um, I, I met people on that road that was um, out of the military, straight out of Iraq. Straight out of Iraq in two, only two weeks, relisting, trying to re go back to the military. He go in the ball and have a fight. And the ball break out of ball fight help and need somebody got killed in the ball. But because he was trained to kill him, because he was never debriefed when he came back, guess where they had now? Where's that? On that road. Right. You know, ready to die for something that our government trained them to do, kill. Wow. So 
So you got to understand that this 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 total game, and it's kind of crazy. But we got to fight back. You know, I can't. There's no limitation. Don't let me give you a limit. Get on the line. Go on the internet. Research. See what you could do. I can't put you no know, my hand on one specific thing and say go and do it. Get out and support your definitely um, clinics. Get out and support. That's what you do. You know. Um, my website, you can go to my website and see what we're doing. My re- website is Resurrection After Exoneration. It's, it's R-A-A, it's R-A-E-R. Uh, um, uh, the phone number there is 504-309-1940. Um, you can call in and ask any questions that y'all need to know about organizing. If you go on my website, I got another website we call Voices of Innocence. That's the advocacy aspect of it. That's the part where the guys go out and tell their story. They go to legislators. They work on legislators. That's who y'all work on. Okay. That's who makes the difference. D- they got to be responsible because they understand that you ain't playing with them. Right. You won't be sitting in their seat next year. John, hold on, hold on one second. Can you give us that phone number again, but but say it slow. We on short time, and I'm going right. to have to be breaking out in a minute, but we need that phone number again, but say it slower, please. All right. Harry code 504 309-1940-1940. Okay. okay, there it is. Well, John, we down we down to two minutes, man. I want to definitely, definitely thank you for being on the show today. Your words of encouragement, your strength, your fire. You're doing your thing, man, and that's what it's about. And I definitely commend you for what you're doing, man, and trying to uplift our city, our country, and everybody, man, all over the world to know if you have been wrongly accused, you definitely are showing people and giving them the wisdom how to fight and help their family members or help them get out of it. And I want to thank you, sir. Thank you for having me, Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share that story with the world, bro, because, you know, you got to, like, you know, let me bring some of the other examinees back. You know, I got a house, I told you. I got a residential living quarter over there with other guys that got stories. The only right. easy just hear from me. I could set up a, a situation for you where you can get a chance to interview maybe three of them at one time. Right. You know? Okay. Um, so, so, so feel free at any time you want to educate the public on this subject. I'm about this. This was, well, this is my life. And know? that's. I ain't chose this. You give it to me, you know? Okay, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm definitely, my producer's going to get in touch with you, man, and me and you definitely going to do that. Like I said, next week we got part three coming up, and we, it, it didn't went so strong that it's into part three. So I'm going to definitely get in touch with you, man. Just hold that situation, and we're going to call you, you know, later today, and we'll talk about that situation, okay? All right, be blessed. Brother. All Thanks, right, God. thank you, man. God bless you, and keep fighting, baby. All right. You too. All right. right. Well, there it is, everybody. That was my man John Thompson on today. I've been falsely accused. This is part two, the segment part two. We got my man Pastor T. We got Patricia. We got Miss Peaches. You know what I'm saying? We got the crew in right now. And we come back in. We'll be talking to them for a minute. And we're going to move on. We got my man coming in, Mr. O.B. Anthony. Hey, trust me. You want to hear this man's story. Every story is very deep, but every story has its own pain and passion that will make you really listen and know we are still in the times of modern day slavery just in a different way all right so hey you listening to conversations with koji i've been falsely accused part two you don't want to miss it baby this is something that can change your life and save somebody's life that you know we'll be right back get ready for the second half we'll be right back in <laughs>